Thank you for joining us for this third Sunday of Advent. And then uh, this weekend, I have a choice of wearing violet or rose, and I think I'm going to choose to wear the violet today. So that's how it goes. <laughs> so shall we begin? The entrance to Anaphon, rejoice in the Lord, Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. The Lord be with you. And with your 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm sure you've heard of a couple of his books along the way. John Steinbeck, you know, The Grapes of Wrath, right, Of Mice and Men. But he also has another story called The Wayward Bus. And in this story, there's this old bus, and it takes a cross-country short shortcut on its journey towards Los Angeles. And it actually gets stuck in the mud. And so while the driver goes for help, the passengers in the bus go and try to take refuge in a cave. And so the author makes that point to reinforce that the, pa the passengers are lost, not only physically, but spiritually. That is why they're on this trip in the first place. They are hoping to find some answers to those questions that they have in their lives, and maybe even begin a new life, have a new start. And so as the passengers enter into the cave, they must pass under a word that has been written with paint over the entrance. The word is repent. And although Steinbeck calls the word to the reader's attention, it's interesting that none of the pastors passengers in the story pay any attention to it at all because they're too caught up in their own situations in life to ever notice it. And so the memory of this story came to mind when I prayed over the gospel today. John the Baptist preached repentance to all the world to hear, but many were too focused on their own distractions to hear him out, to notice it. So maybe they had good reason to, because at this time, the Jewish people hadn't had a prophet in over 400 years. They were distressed, isolated, even bordering on hopeless. They needed some light in their lives, they just didn't know it. So I wonder if the same could be said for all of us. We're looking for that little spark to get us through today, tomorrow, this pandemic, but we're afraid that it will cause a fire in our hearts <laughs> through God that we can't put out. So what are we supposed to think of John the Baptist and his message of repentance for us? And so just imagine if we saw him today, a guy wearing a camel's hair with a leather belt all around his waist, a guy who'd been living off locusts and honey in the desert, who was probably pretty shaggy with a big beard and lots of hair everywhere. Why in the world would we listen to that guy? I guess, you know, I would think I would begin to think about listening to him if his words were not about himself, but about somebody else. Like if he was sent to prepare the way for somebody who could actually make a change, a difference in my life. And so John the Baptist speaks about repentance in reference to the kingdom of heaven. That it is near, and the way to prepare for it is to repent. And repentance means to change one's heart and one's mind even the change of direction in life. In other words, a U-turn. Repentance involves turning around 
facing that new direction with a change of heart, and even that new commitment going forward. So maybe we are called to repent, because we have felt so often like we can do it all on our own, by ourselves. We see where that way of thinking has gotten us so far, all this frustration, despair, all those things that we have done and accomplished, and yet we're still yearning for something more in our lives. So do you ever get tired of people telling you how great things are going to be in the, in the future? They tell you to take your licks and to keep on going with your head down, which sounds like great advice, because you know what? That sounds incredibly fulfilling to me. But that's not how I learn. That's not how I prosper. What actually helps me more is if a person gives his time and gives me the tools to succeed. Give me a mentor, show me the way, and hopefully I can reproduce what he has shown me and add to what he has already given me. So let's look at the gospel and see if we can figure out how in the world to repent in the first place. What tools are set before us? Is it leading us to? First, John the Baptist says that he's not worthy to carry those sandals. A sign of humility. Because what is more humility, humiliating than associating yourself with something that gets blocked on all day long? Second, the one, who, the one who he is preparing for will baptize with the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Spirit can be seen as the promise of new life. So repentance starts with that humbling of ourselves and ends with trusting in a promise of change, a new life that comes from something or someone greater than ourselves. Our repentance reminds us that we're not in control. How could we be after we notice all those mistakes that we've been making along the way? We are humbled by our lack of control, and yet, you know, we're also set free. Because that new life we are yearning for, it doesn't have to come from us, but from God. It may, it may make us feel weak to ask for help, or even that forgiveness or mercy from God. It may even make us feel weak to know that we don't have all those answers. But actually, it's a sign of wisdom. So, let God provide that strength that we don't have to set things right. He is more than enough to go around. So this Advent, we may remember his strength, and not our own. Ask for it, and let him know that we haven't been too distracted to see what he has prepared for all of us going forward. now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the members of the body of Christ, the church, for effective preaching and compelling witness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, for judges and legislators, for keen insight, clear judgment, and concern for the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister to the sick, for 
healing in both body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose death draws near, for courage, strength, and true compassion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered together as the body of Christ in this time and this place, for generous hearts sensitive to the needs of our neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your loving mercy, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what has begun in sacred mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Carl our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, oh said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only 
only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Meet an antiphon. Say to the faint of heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, our God will come and he will save us. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.